All right, so here goes this uh, induction heater build I was working on. I uh, kind of put it to the side for a while and uh, forgot about it. So basically, this is just another like you know recycled uh, parts kind of deal, uh, where the only thing I felt like I needed to buy was the resonant capacitor and like you know the work coil and all that. Uh, so in this case, there's, you know, there's a lot of oversized stuff going on here, right? So I've got IGBT bricks, huge capacitor, uh, you know, just big, you know, three phase rectifier module, stuff like that. Uh, but this is basically the first kind of test layout that I've got for it. Big honking toroid I just pulled uh, that was used, you know, as a filter from some big drive or something. So that's my uh, primary. And... Uh, probably 200 amp bricks so again it's not ideal but i felt like it should work i already had this full bridge you know kind of set up with the gdt uh, for a qcw and i switched that out so i was like all right well let me see if i can use these right uh, and then for the driver basically what i got going on is i've tried to use the bare minimum i felt like i could barely get away with at uh what i was hoping to be you know maybe 50 60 kilohertz something like that I've just got a 15 volt regulator, uh, 5 volt regulator. Then I actually just added this uh, 12 volt over here later to just power the fans. Uh, so it does need the fans, right? And then I'm using a couple, I think they're like 15 amp uh, gate drivers back there. Uh, so basically what I'm doing is I'm just uh, using uh, inverted signals on the output of a Schmidt trigger over here to drive those. And then this chip over here is the uh, PLL, it's a CD4046BE. Uh, so basically, I'm going to use uh, feedback using this guy. And um, basically, the idea was before I did any of that, I'd be able to you know, trim the VCO around to adjust, uh, to just run it fixed uh, frequency, right? Uh, but I'm not doing that right now. I'm actually coming out of the signal generator to give it the input signal. Because uh, just the way I wired this circuit up, it just happened to be that when I ground out the input and just uh, use the VCO, I get an irregular duty cycle. It's like 45%, something like that. Uh, that goes away when you feed it the solid 50% duty input signal, right? So that's basically just what I'm doing. And uh, I'm going to feed it, you know, AC eventually. So that, that's what that's for. But right now I'm just feeding it DC coming off this supply and this guy is going to be you know like a uh, 18 volts to feed the driver circuit the way i was first tuning this is i would tune it with no load in there at all low voltage and tweak the frequency till uh it basically pulled the most no load current and then i would add something in there and then uh the current would drop quite a bit right so that's how this thing is set up right now i'm basically just gonna tune it into the same frequency where i thought it was running all right which is about 63 kilohertz the reason i had put this to the side at first because i guess i accidentally bought a uh, resonant cap that was the wrong value so i must have thought it was 1.2 microfarad i don't know why because that's an irregular value but i ended up getting this uh 0.12 microfarad which was too small so i'm not going to be able to stack you know enough of those gigantic 80 amp deals to get what i need uh, so i think i actually thought i was going to use that for something else so then when i picked this back up you know completely forgetting about it i was just thought like oh i've already got everything awesome you know let me just go ahead and put it on there i didn't even look at it until i realized like wait why isn't this thing uh getting resonant <laughs> right and i realized like oh that's why so i just left it on there being lazy and added these other random caps so those are actually caps i had from a while back that were made for induction heaters so i'm not gonna push you know too much crazy power through this thing right now until i get that figured out but you can also see i've got the uh tubes for water cooling so i'm also going to water cool it um but right now i'm just going to kind of see how it sort of runs right so i guess first what i can do is uh i can just run it without the uh input signal let me see if i can latch that on there so that's going to be the bridge waveform again, the output of the bridge. And uh, so that's pulling quite a bit. Gate drive, about 15 watts. And uh, no voltage on the bridge. So let me cut the output of that to about uh, you know, like 23. And that's what that starts looking like. Which, let's see, I guess, yeah, I guess that's about right. 
So that doesn't look too hot. Uh, so it's pulling about 60 watts already at that 23 volts, right? But I don't like running it like that because of the uh, irregular duty cycle. So then I'm going to cut this guy on. All right, and then you can see what happens. So now I'm back to a normal duty cycle. I've got balanced waveforms now. And it's just running at the, it's the same frequency that I set it at, about 63 kilohertz, right? And you can see the uh, output has dropped a little bit. So at about 24 volts DC in, um, let's see, 62 kilohertz or so, and we got about 48 volts, four, you know, 49 volts uh, peak to peak on the bridge. So I'm just going to keep going up. to uh let me see so 40 volts about 115 watts and about 80 volts or so should be let me see about 86 or so say so i'm gonna leave it at that just for a little bit so it seems to be running all right uh i can see a little bit of smoke coming off the load now yeah so it is heating up Really the only issue is just, you know, really slow rise time with those, but the waveform looks pretty good. So theoretically, what, I can go up to like 60 volts or something like that, uh, maybe a little bit more. I guess 62 volts I can go up on here, which is not going to uh, bring that up a whole lot. But it is smoking. I guess it's smoking that paint off. And uh, I don't really give a crap about these hole saws. I mean, nothing doesn't seem like anything's going to overheat too crazy fast, so uh, let me see, 45, so I guess I can just try to, yeah, so there goes uh, 153, well, let me do, uh, 153 watts or something like that, right, so it is getting pretty hot, um, I can hear it like crackling, making some noises <laughs> actually so just with that short runtime cut everything back off uh, that was probably a bad idea now that i think about it because i'm not going to be able to to move that and it's just going to keep smoking yeah heat sink still cold um you know this guy's seen everything's still cold right so that was very low power uh so that you know gives me a little confidence that maybe i could actually crank this up quite a bit all right, so now here's the unloaded current draw from this type of setup. So I backed it down to about 61 kilohertz. And I'm gonna go up a hair at a time. So that's 61 kilohertz, 61.1, 61.2, 61.3. So I'm gonna go all the way up to 63 like I was at. So that's 63, and you can see what happens, I'm at uh, 6 amps. And if I start going up to 63.1, 63.2, you see basically I'm maxing out the CC on the supply. So unloaded, I'm pulling 7 amps already at about 24 volts or so. Uh, and then which, in that case, you can see when I put this little load in, that drops down to uh, like 2.5, something like that, right? I guess you could say what would happen if I back this down. Let me put it to where it was at, about 16.9. And I'm still pulling, or excuse me, 61.9. Still pulling about the same. And uh, when I take this out, let's see, I'm pulling about 2 amps. So let me see. Let me drop that to about... So I'm at 60.9 kilohertz, unloaded, pulling it about an amp. And now when I add that in, it goes up to a little bit over two amps. All right. So let's say if, if I run it like that, not quite sure what the uh, bridge waveform looks like. So I can bring that to 100 watts 
at uh, 35 volts so might be able to put some considerable heat through that thing let me check out the bridge all right so back on the bridge that's what that's looking like I'm at uh, 35 volts, 100 watts. With this guy in there he wants to keep sliding, so he's getting pretty hot. So basically, um, you know, the way I had it tuned at first was just that I had it tuned basically to the maximum, uh, the peak input current unloaded, and then by adding the load, it uh, detuned it, so it dropped quite a bit, but still, you know, pushing some decent power in it so now I've sort of done it the other way around where I've uh, only had it increase current as I add the load so that you know again that's sort of like an iterative process you have to tune around with it if you can do it like that uh, without feedback I suppose uh, depending on your setup you could just tune it to a certain frequency and, and uh, leave it there I guess I guess it all depends some type of Ebola is now cooking off of it so yeah, everything's still cool. I'm actually dragging it down a little bit more by moving the uh, butter knife closer to the windings. So yeah, that's about as hot as I'm gonna get that. I'm not gonna let it actually get all the way red hot. Uh, now I don't know what to do with this damn thing. So. Yeah, I'm just go ahead and stop the video. But yeah, that's how that, <laughs> that's how that's working. All right, so I said screw it. Now I just got this uh, wrench right here. It's so, uh, yeah, it's about 61.2, 45 watts, and I'm gonna put that at uh, I don't know, let's do, well shoot, let's do uh, 55 volts. Uh, 235 uh, so again janky setup but I just want to see uh, if that thing can get red hot without too much effort I feel at 233 watts I should be able to heat that up without it taking forever um, you know, it's not that huge of a wrench so that would be small fraction of the power of course again you know none, none of this is like tuned or anything so yeah i can see it getting red so it is actually heating up so like four amps 55 volts so yeah that's not bad so now it's rising up to uh the amps are going up going up going up so I'll put it back down at 50 still going up going up feel like that would have been way quicker if uh, you know that coil was much much smaller but again I want I like to be able to get pretty much anything hot in there so I don't know um, it's kind of hard to judge you know let's just say that's 250 watts uh, with, with how long that took so if that was a thousand watts so let's just say one kilowatt then that you know it wouldn't have been really instantaneous but I don't know but, you know well, what would that be like 20 seconds or something maybe that it would take to get red hot maybe less than a kilowatt these exact dimensions and load and whatnot. I don't know. <laughs> Cut that off. So again, um, running that kind of deal. Let's see. So yeah, I can feel the coil now. At least on this side, it's getting pretty hot. I think that's just the heat coming off here because that is putting out a ton of heat. Um, yeah, over here on this side, I don't really feel anything. So again, yeah, everything's still cold. I mean, it should be at that low power. Probably wouldn't cut this up 
as it is anymore i mean i still have to this is just like as soon as i finished like the last little piece of wire on here i thought where i could a uh, function test it before going any further uh i ended up just slapping this together and running it so i'm not even really done with the driver uh, but yeah i mean it just seems like without really trying to do any maths you know i had an exact length of wire here i just wound it around the biggest toroid i had and uh, that's what I ended up with, even though I kind of goofed on the capacitor here. These caps actually do fairly well. They shouldn't be getting all that hot at only around 250, but they still feel, you know, pretty room temperature. I might be able to stick with these big-ass bricks, although, you, you know, it seems like you definitely don't need them, right? 